Hello everyone, and welcome back to Planet Zoo, a Sahula Sand Safari, where we've got little piglets! Oh my goodness, look at how cute that little oinker is! One little oinker, two little oinkers! Alright, come on, Elm, you can do it! Alright, oh she had two babies! You guys, they are so freaking cute! Look at them run with their little tails! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I didn't know that I would fall so in love with warthogs when we added these guys in, but I have really been falling in love with the warthogs the more time that we actually spend with them and the more I learn about them. I've actually been watching even more Safari Live, which as you guys know is my favorite live stream. And they have three hours of the beautiful African wilderness live streamed for anyone in the world to watch uh twice a day and i watch the morning version of it while i do a ton of work for our pixel biology channel editing videos and tidying things up and i have come to really admire the noble warthog because they very rarely put up with being like prey. They are constantly on the lookout, out, they run so freaking fast, and the mama warthogs are so dedicated to taking care of their babies. I've also seen them like totally chase off a, a jaguar before, which I thought was very impressive. Like the warthog was not taking any nonsense. So I'm hoping we can learn even more about the Warthogs as we uh, take our time to continue to improve and expand Suhula Sand Safari. And today, an archaeology center by the way. And today I actually did want to work on kind of like a warthoggy, hippo-y area. I want to add in some more mud flats. I really want to just go hog wild, you might say, with these mud flats. And I want to expand this section and make it so that there's like a lot of water over here. I want to expand the bachelor oasis so that the hippos will actually have more room to frolic. Like this guy has been on his own forever. He's 53 years old now. Thunder the hippo is now 53. We have made this man, this, this hippo man, wait so long for love. He has literally waited half a century to fall in love. That is, or, you know, to get a mate. Come on, you know what I mean. Uh, but that is just too long. Oh my freaking gosh. We're gonna fix that right now. All right, so we're gonna expand this section and I wanna have a big mud flat. I wanna make it so that we're gonna expand how big this waterway is. We might even make it to be kind of like a big river zone. Uh, and I also wanna make it so people can come and get a little bit closer to the hippos. They can get closer, whoops, let's come this way. They can get closer to the elephants. Uh, maybe we'll have like a lookout post on the side. All right, let's do this one right here. And we'll expand it like this. This is kind of what I'm thinking. So people can like walk in up in this section a little bit. Then we're gonna remove this barrier. We still have the rock barrier, but we're not actually going to put all rocks down this time because thanks to the amazing advances in the science of making barricades for our animals, I have actually discovered you can indeed use plants as natural barriers thanks to our amazing wolf wilds that we have been working on, uh, which explains so much to me about I was so confused I couldn't understand why the common reeds and the elephant grass actually create a blockade that animals cannot walk through but if we take this itty bitty little giraffe for instance you will see the giraffe cannot come near the elephant grass so we can actually grab this elephant grass and instead of having just endless endless rocks we can come on down and we can get a little creative. Let me go ahead and maybe align the surface. Is that gonna help me out here? I think so. No, not really. And then suddenly I have the elephant grass going everywhere. We can get a little creative and we can actually put elephant grass down as a natural barrier. Like, isn't that so cool? And not only that, we can come over and grab some of the trees like Karma the giraffe's tree. And we can use that as a barrier to keep the elephants from being able to climb up as well. 
And let's see, where else do I want to put things? Let's come back to the barricade, because I do want to actually put- Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not with the Ellie's, I sure don't. I sure don't want to put down a glass barricade with the Ellie's. I take that back. <laughs> I bet a hippo would probably charge right through a grass area as well. Uh, here, do I have another stray giraffe tree? I probably have a baby giraffe I haven't named yet, and I need to put their tree down. Hopefully we can slow down for just a little bit and catch up on some of those things and get some new species in. I don't know about you guys, but I am totally ready for some new species. <gasps> and we do have a whole bunch of baby boys who don't have names yet. Oh, my precious little one. Look at how pretty this is. There's just gi giraffe calves everywhere. I am so in love. My heart goal is that we can get up to 100 giraffes through the entirety of the vast horizons one day. That is like the, the end goal of phase one of this miraculous place that we're trying to build. Uh, so let's actually name this guy who probably won't stay here forever. We're gonna name him um, High Dreams, uh, Vast Dreams, Accomplishment, Achievement. What is a good, I love, I love using those evocative emotional names. I need you guys, like, what are some really great emotions that inspire adventure and creativity, accomplishment, facing your challenges with bravery, uh, overcoming them, being able to break down things that you thought were terribly difficult and make progress on them. We're going to call this guy, hmm, dreamer, climber, climber, dreamer, achiever. Uh, let's go achievement. His, he's going to be achievement. And we're going to give him a new giraffe tree. We'll have several more babies to name later when we have a minute. All right, let's come down here. See, and I can just slip this tree in. No problemo. And then we can actually add in even more grass. No, I don't want to add in the grass onto the tree. You're going to make me regret that later. Trust me. All right, let's just sprinkle these around. And in theory, the elephants shouldn't be able to go through said elephant grass. So we'll have to see how that works out. But I love this. I love that we're going to be able to start making things look a lot more naturalistic. So we're actually going to remove all of those barriers. I actually want to replace this rock. How fast can I go? All right, let's pull up the big rocks. I don't know what it is about the ostrich, but the second that they can sense weakness in the barricades, they barrel through it. Like, they, they sense, like, there has been a crack in the establishment that surrounds me, and they immediately just figure it out and try to, like, run for it. Uh-huh! Told you! Told you! Of course it would be an ostrich! Get back in there, buddy old pal. He's thinking about it. Oh, no, you don't. Haha! -ha! You thought you could escape me, Torrent? I don't think so. All right, you get back in there. All right. I, I, like, I, they're, they're the perfect guinea pigs for figuring out if you didn't quite make your barricade strong enough, which is great to have an ostrich. I feel like I could wrangle an ostrich. Like, even, even right now in my current state of, like, actual real life physical well-being i'm pretty sure i could wrangle an ostrich try to do the same with like this elephant that's coming on over uh-uh all right ellie Ta-da! and there you have it guys see just like that jose one of our wonderful older ellies is not going to be able to leave the area even though it is just grass there's something about it. It's magical. He just can't figure out how to get through it. And I love it because it gives us this gorgeous natural view. Just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I'll be able to take down so many of these rock balls now that we have figured this out. Uh, all right. Also important, I want to have people be able to come down here and see said Ellie's. But I think we have made the poor hippo wait so freaking long for love and life and family. So we're going to temporarily traumatize him by removing his waterway. So sorry. And then we're going to come over here. Make this really big. 
And we're going to give him a gorgeous, huge waterway that he can come into. And I also want to put, like, maybe a mid-level. Come on. There we go. We'll try to do this in a couple steps because I want to smooth this down. And we might put in a couple flamingos. Maybe just one one group of flamingo at first. Because I, I, I swear the flamingos are quite chaotic. <laughs> flamingos are like pure chaos. There's nothing neutral about their chaos. All right. Thunder, I know you're you're like, where's my water? You're gonna need to move for just a second. Boom. Look at that! Thunder, what do you think? Is that enough room? Yay! He's much happier. And now let's make it so he is no longer going to be alone. Oops. And let's also go ahead and put Jose down. I might have to actually expand. <laughs> Jose, do you have enough? Yeah, you've got enough space. Oh, his social group has gotten kind of small. We, we need to see if we have another bachelor boy elephant that we can bring into the bachelor herd. Uh, all right, so look at that. Yay! Oh, quiet. That's because quiet's in there. That's why. There we go. Now they're happy. All right, can I get you anything else, Thunder? Do you need- no, he's like, I've got all the enrichment I need. I could use some better meal quality if you don't mind. Um, but really, it's social group. All right, so we're gonna get our hippo uh, a good social group. And actually, really quickly, I want to see if we can make it kind of midday more often so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. But let's check out what it takes to make a good hippo social group. The common hippopotamus, I do believe is what they're called. Or just the hippopotamus, it seems. There we go. The common, haha, -ha, hippopotamus is a large mammal native to the rivers of sub-Saharan Africa. They are large water-drawing animals with long protruding, protruding, there we go, teeth, nostrils on the top of their snout, small ears, and thick gray-brown skin. Males are 13.2 by 16, or two, 16.5 feet long and weigh between 3,300 and 4,400 pounds. Heck, hippopotami face many threats. Chiefly, they are endangered by loss of habitat, conflict, conflict with humans over land, plus the threat of hunting. The species is poached for its meat and the ivory found in their teeth. Oh, we're not gonna let that happen to ours. And hippos are listed as vulnerable. They can have up to 29 females. I think we're gonna go ahead and just get two females so that we have a group of three, which I think sounds about appropriate. All right, so let's get a couple hippo females. It's It's been too long since we have had a proper, like, okay, hippopotamus, there we go. A proper new addition, if you ask me, to our wonderful Suhula Sands Safari. We're gonna grab this female, and we'll grab this female. All right, let's find... Oh, and our African wild dogs did not end up finding. Let's try trading them again. And if they don't find a home this time with somebody else, because they, they have great stats, uh, so I wanna give somebody a chance to get them. But if they don't find a home, then we will go ahead and we will just release them into the wild. Ooh, Crescidia is about to mate! Yay! All right, let's get these two hippopotami added in here. And we have wild dog pups that we're expecting, friends! Huzzah! Huzzah! I am very tickled about that. And Shy has just had her baby! Oh, more spotty giraffes to coo over. This little guy's gold level too. He's actually indie adventurers. All right, we're gonna we're gonna name him. Uh, Indy Jones? Indy? Indy Adventurer. Er, the second. There we go. May he live long and, and prosper and go on many adventures. Uh, meanwhile, let's come down over here and I want to spruce this area up for our brand new hippopotami. Let's see. Africa. Gardening, maybe? Hmm. 
plants. We've got a lot of bird's nest ferns. The the ma ming mangrove, the mangrove trees would be nice just to put down. A few, you know, we don't have any palm trees like anywhere and this is seems like a very appropriate place to put palm trees and some bracken. Um, maybe not the elephant grass cuz now we know the elephant grass creates like a blockade. Oh, look at the little mangrove. Those are kind of cute. Hopefully I made it deep enough that everybody will be able to swim too. That's very important. Um, we have these bushes, which actually do help to kind of lighten the, I, I kind of like that because it, it sort of helps to blend in all of the elephant grass. So it doesn't feel like you're just suddenly like erupting into the wild. Oh dear, Daffodil the common warthog is having some more babies. I think we might have to have some of our predators when they have babies, kind of like we're doing in Wolf Wild. We might occasionally have some of our predators clear out the warthogs and uh, other smaller prey, but I have to think about that just as a way of kind of balancing the scales, but with less drama than we do when we work on it in Wolf Wilds. It actually helps a lot, I think, to show the, the a little bit more of the relationship between predator and prey because we wouldn't just have endless zebra being born over and over again but at the same time Sahula Sands is a little bit more managed than um, the Wolf Wilds National Park oh I love this I mean of course I love this I'm putting down plants <gasps> the papyrus I wish that there was like a little information about the plants that you were all so messing with because we could learn so much about like, why papyrus? What do they do? Align to surface, fallen mossy log. See, that's cool. Like just have a nice fallen mossy log that we could toss in here for no reason. Oh, Daffodil, I think I heard you have babies. There was suddenly a loud squeal. <gasps> Daffodil the second, you're so cute. Oh my gosh, there's another baby! Oh my goodness, we have so many babies! And where are my hippos? I keep waiting for my hippos to show up. Are they in here yet? Oh, hello, ladies! Hello, hello! They're blocking the way! Come on, come on! Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, he's gonna be so happy! Alright, come on over here, my dears! Believe it or not, Thunder now has a couple hippo ladies who have found his lovely oasis and they would very much like to join him in admiring it. So may I introduce you guys to Kelly. So we're going to name this one Kelly. There we go. She is actually going to be hippo numero uno. Look at Thunder doing the very hard work of putting down his territory markers, which for hippos happens to be, uh, you know, spraying poop everywhere. That's actually how they release their hormones about. That's how they really make it clear that this is their territory. And then we're going to have uh, Osla after Oscar. We're gonna have Osla move in as well. And I actually think we don't need as much water because they appear to need more space. No, they need more land and they need more swimming area. All right, well, I hear you hippos. Uh, I will go ahead and I will have to do another expansion next time then to make sure that we have very happy hippos. We have claimed this territory in the, the name of um, in the name of Thunder, the hippo, but clearly it's not enough and we need to get the humans down here to come and admire it as well. Uh, so this is, this is pretty exciting. And then we might finally get people wrapped around so that they can come up on top and see the view from Bachelor's Oasis. Slowly but surely, this messy chaos is taking on a new shape and I just cannot wait to see where we are going to go from here, guys. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys could, do please, where'd they go? My hippos! <laughs> if you guys could, do please leave a like for our lovely hippos. We'll talk so much more about the special secretions they have that look like they are sweating blood, but it's actually a special sun, self-made sunscreen. We'll talk more about how even though they're so huge and can account for many human deaths every year, they happen to be strict herbivores. 
And we will adventure onwards in whatever we happen to stumble upon in Suhula Sand Safari next time. So if you guys could leave that like for our hippos and stay curious. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.